really, uh, really proud of our guys. So, man, we made some huge strides um, since our last couple games. And, you know, I'm just crushed for them. Crushed for them that it didn't turn out to win uh, for all their effort. Rick Barnes uh, complimented Aaron Neesmith and his emotion and all that, how distraught he was in the handshake line. What, what, what do you think about that emotion? Is that a good thing? Is that something that can lead to some leadership? Aaron's a stud. Um, again, he has every attribute that you want in your leader, that you want in, in someone on your basketball team. And so, you know, and he wasn't the only guy crying. There's a lot of guys crying because, you know, we thought we deserved this game. We thought there were some things that happened. Um, you know, obviously that were out of our control um, for us winning. And, um, boy, they fought all games really proud of them. Did you get a look at the flavor? Um, you know, a little bit. I know there's a protocol. So, um, you know, I, I was talking about our players right now and just say, you know, how proud I am of them, again, for fighting through a lot of adversity and still coming back and having chances to win. What do you tell your team after a game like this? I don't, what do you tell them? I, I mean, yeah, you know, um, we had a great moment. A lot of guys crying in there. And, um, you know, we're really young. And there's just no getting around it in our leading scores tonight. Two freshmen and a sophomore. And I don't think they played a freshman one minute tonight. So, you know, this is this is a building time. This is a bonding time. And we all wanted to win, but how we bonded tonight and how we bonded in that locker room, I mean, you've got to go through stuff like this. It makes you tougher. It makes you better. It makes you more hungry. And, um, again, I think, I think that locker room was the closest we've been all season. Did you ask for a review? I think for say you got fouled at the end on under your basket when you wore. I did. I did. I I, I wanted to go to the monitor, um, and you know, the, the reply was you know they didn't need to go to the monitor right then. Coach, another close loss at home. What do you guys need to do to kind of finish some of these out? Yeah, you know, I'm just gonna talk about the positives right now. So, um, you know, our guys busted the tail, and um, you know we had a defensive rebound up six. Unfortunately, it didn't bounce our way, um, you know, after that. But in overtime, we fought back. You know, we easily could have collapsed. We fought back and uh, still had a chance to win in overtime. You said you had a good moment in the locker room. Did anyone just, other than you, like the players, speak up, say anything in that moment? You know, they were speaking a lot during huddles. Um, you know, obviously, they're really disappointed. But the fire and the emotion we got from them is, is what we've been pushing towards, what we've been working towards. And, and now we got to keep it, you know, as we move forward. Had a different starting lineup, did some things different offensively. Mm -hmm. Is that stuff you've been thinking about and working toward, or did, did those changes all come in the last three you, days? You know, again, we, we were built as a drop-back pass team, and, um, and so a lot of our players were in those roles. And we've had some actions that go to more like a wishbone, you know, put in football sense. And so now we're kind of switching to more like, like, like a, a, a wishbone deal. So, you know, it, we played, you know, two bigs tonight which was different. I thought they did a really good job. I thought they shared the ball well. And um, and I thought, obviously, we made shots. When you make shots, your offense looks a lot better. Rex, they always say, you don't let a game beat you twice. You got to put this one behind you, get a point on Saturday. How do you, how do, you do that? You know, if I knew that exact answer, like I want to be coaching, I'd be speaking across the country, <laughs> um, you know, making a lot of money doing that. Um, so, you know, it, it boils down, I think, to, to you know, we have 40 hours or so to, to rebuild, or I guess to learn, to rebuild, and then to prepare. I'm, I'm sorry, prepare. And so there's a lot we have to do these next couple of days. Um, but the first thing is going to be, you know, keeping these guys positive, keeping them upbeat. Because uh, it is devastating. You know, you know, obviously they wanted to win, and they played well enough to win. Rick Barnes said your program is along the same path as he is, just younger. A few years ago is where his was. Did, did he mention that to you, about that path? And... Can you see his point that you're young now, you can grow into what they are? <laughs> well, as a coach, I see our youth every day. Every day in practice, I see it. You know, you see it in games. I, I thought some of our guys grew up tonight. You know, I thought some of our, our guys, you know, mistakes that they made earlier in the year, it didn't phase them, it didn't phase their body language tonight. And again, we've been working not just on the X and O's, we've been working on, you know, the manhood and the attitude. And, and, and that's probably one of my, my biggest fulfillments tonight as we saw guys overcome some adversity and still stay the course and play well. And uh, and that's what we're striving for. How satisfied, how satisfied were you with the kind of the compete level and the energy from the teams? It seemed like they were kind of playing with just a little bit of extra edge, a little bit of extra motivation. Yeah, you know, um, again, this is a very physical team. We out-rebounded them tonight. You know, that's a great compliment, you know, to, uh, to our guys fighting. And, um, you know, I think some guys are feeling more comfortable. You know, Aaron Neesmith is a freshman. Um, but he's starting to play much more mature. You know, Yanni Wetzel never played Division One in his life. 
Um, he's starting to start to feel more comfortable out there. And so as these guys feel more comfortable, you know, obviously that next step, the next step we're all waiting for is, you know, to close it out and get a win. Bryce, one of the wrinkles to your offense was a lot of kick-ins to the post and some kick-outs off that. Can you talk specifically about that wrinkle tonight? Yeah, our, our, our post did a really good job uh, passing back and forth. And then Saban did a really good job when they were switching some actions. You know, he made some threes and, and made a pay for switching. So at the end of the day, when you make shots, um, when you take care of the ball, you know, when you pass it better, when you get a better quality shot, you end up making more. Is he starting to see the floor better? It seems like more of the times when he drives, it used to be just lefts. He seems like he's kicking out of it. You know, seven assists, two turnovers. Uh, he would not have had that two weeks ago. And so I, I think you see major improvement, you know, from him in that area. I think you see major improvement um, in our guys just knowing, being a little more comfortable with each other, sharing the ball better. And, um, and again, you know, you know, we're encouraged because we played, you know, a lot better. But, you know, obviously we're disappointed in going away. So did, did you see this type of performance coming, or did this surprise you that they took the big step tonight? You know, for two weeks we've been practicing well. Um, our energy's good, and you know, our energy's not stopping. You know, we're moving forward. We're, 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 we're striving. We got, we got a vision as we move forward. And we got, a great, we got some great people um, that we can build around. And, um, and again, we like where our culture's at. You know, that next step is just getting that maturity and closing out some games. Tennessee obviously put a lot of fans in the stands, but Vanderbilt fans kind of were, were pretty loud for you know from a lot of the game. How much did that kind of fuel your energy and feeling? You know, like like this gym kind of has been in the past. Yeah, you know, it's it obviously the crowd was uh, fantastic. Um, you know, obviously we liked it when their fans were a little more quiet during some of those stretches, and um, you know, unfortunately, um, just didn't go our way. But our fans were awesome, proud of them, and thank them for coming out and uh, being there for us. They had to get an extraordinary effort from Grant Williams to win yeah. that game. He, you just have to tip your cap to a guy on a night like that? Or? You, you, you know, you, you got to pick your poison. You know, they surrounded him. You know, they, they, they subbed in a lot, put a lot of shooters around him. And, you know, usually, you know, every game he usually gets two charges a game. And so, you know, when it came down to it, we were still kind of having the lead. So we didn't want to switch everything we were doing because our guys were comfortable in what we were doing. And, you know, if he misses four of those, four of those free throws, maybe it changes things. Um, you know, if, if we can get one stop in there, you know, that changes things. You guys had a 15 to 2 early. Uh, we call it timeout. Can any players get some of the huddle kind of take ownership and kind of take over in a way to lead You know, it, it was collective tonight. A lot of guys were talking in huddles. And, um, you know, I mean, success breeds success. And so if you start to make good plays, you feel better. You feel like more authority to talk and to, and to say things. And, um, you know, we're striving for breakthrough. You know, once we get breakthrough, it'll be fun to see how these guys react.